the Balmer exhibition in 2013, Paufinger announced their largest loader crane. It was the snappily named PK200002 LSH. And here it is in model form, and it's made by Conrad. It's in the colours of the Austrian company ATS. Out of the box there are a number of small parts, but there are no instructions. And as usual, the first task with a Conrad truck model is a bit of twist and tear, or knife and slice, if that's what you prefer. The first bit of assembly is to attach a stabiliser pad at the front, and it just screws in. It's very simple and easy to do, and it's not really clear why it wasn't done in the factory. Mind you, just look how the hand has been transformed into an alien claw by doing this operation. Yoich, hopefully it will get better soon. The next task is the traditional fitting of the mirrors. And as usual, they just press into holes already formed in the cab. The good thing is it's not a loose fit, so the mirrors won't drop off. There's also one roof aerial to fit. The big Palfinger comes with a winch drum and hook, but it's not reefed up to the end of the jib, so let's get on and do that. And to do that, we need to unfold the crane a bit, and then pull off some rope and remove the masking tape that's on the drum. Anyway, after yanking plenty off, I said yanking plenty off, we can look to fit to the end of the jib. Four small pulleys are applied and you can attach them to a number of points on the crane. So we'll start by attaching one at the end of the jib and then feeding the rope over it. Once we've got it on, it gives us a direct run from the winch drum to the end of the jib. But that's not realistic because the real crane has a complex mechanism for routing the rope along the boom and jib. It's too complex to model accurately in 1 to 50 scale, so we can use the supplied pulleys to make attachments at intermediate points along the boom. Although it's not accurate, it's a decent modelling compromise. Starting underneath, the rear axles are detailed in plastic, but there's no drive shaft running to the engine. And the steering is modelled for functionality only. The MAN cab has got a nice light bar on the roof. And the ATS colour scheme and graphics are very good. At the rear, the truck has got a heavy counterweight and the lights are painted. The big Palfinger crane is a complex model with many parts. The outrigger beams are plastic with no graphics. And the pistons are simple screw threads. The big boom rams look suitably powerful, but there's no hydraulic hoses to add detail. But the boom and fly jib are certainly complex pieces of modelling. This is a big heavy truck, so let's see how it drives. And it's nice to report that it's a very smooth roller. If we look at the front, there is steering on both axles, but it's not linked, so you can have some weird modes which wouldn't work. But if you set the wheels pointing the same way, the truck corners well because there's a good angle of steering. Also, as you would expect, you can tilt the cab, although not too far, and underneath there is an MAN engine. But this model is really about the big Palfinger crane, so let's get it set up. And there are plenty of outriggers to use, starting with the one at the front, which we'll unscrew. And then we'll move on to the side outriggers, which are of the rotate down and pull out type. They are free stage and when the leg is rotated it clips into place. After that you can lower the pads by unscrewing. This is a big heavy crane so unusually it's got six point outriggers and there's one at the rear which pulls out and folds down. And perhaps the only issue on the model is that the plastic outrigger beams are a little bit too flexible. Ok we're all set up so let's get up. And the rams that control the main boom are certainly stiff but they're quite smooth. And that probably indicates that the right grade of plastic has been used on the ram jackets. Once we've got the crane opened up, we can rotate it. And on the review model, it's certainly stiff, and this crane isn't going to flap about. To open up the telescopic sections, you just pull them apart. And there is friction between the sections, so it will hold most poses. Except perhaps when the boom and jib are pointing straight up and under load. At full stretch, it's a big impressive model, so let's do a dim check and see how big it is. 
and it's about 34 inches or 87 centimeters. Another configuration option you have is to remove the fly jib. So to do that, we'll just disconnect the pulley at the end and the fly jib just pulls off. So with just the main boom, you can go for heavier lifts. This is certainly an impressive model from Conrad of a very big loader crane. As usual the functionality is very good and is a nice level of detailing. It is a bit pricey for a loader crane but it is an impressive and complex model. It also looks very good in the ATS colour scheme and overall it's highly recommended. Mm -hmm. 